when we get to the uh, consent items or any correction, I may just have you read the uh, amount for payroll and expenditures. Okay. Okay. Now, now we're screening. Okay. It says we're streaming, Jody. One more. Yeah, I, I just, I have a, I have Facebook open on my other page just to make sure it's working, and it didn't seem to be working the first time I tried it, so I stopped and started over. Oh, there's the mayor. I think. Wait. Oh, there she is. All right. Do we have everyone here? We do, Mayor. Uh, all the council members are um, are present. Good. Just making sure here. All right. Um, with um, with that, I will pull my agenda up here and get started. Um, so uh, I would like to call the Tuesday, June fifteenth, two thousand twenty-one, Duval City Council meeting to order. Uh, would you please join me in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Uh, clerk, would you please take the roll? Council member Brudnicki. Here. Council member Schaefer. Here. Council member McHenry. Here. Council member Remington. Here. Council member Hogue. Here. Uh, Council member Napland. She's here, but on mute. Uh, Council Member Langle. Here. We have a quorum. Great, thank you. Under additions or corrections to the agenda, under consent, please add payroll for June 4th, 2021, in the amount of $324,264.78. Claims for June 2nd, 2021, through June 14th, 2021, in the amount of $129,925.86. Under scheduled items, remove uh, King County Fire District 45 update. And um, with that, do we have any council members that wanted to speak this evening? All right, um, seeing none, with that, do we have a motion to approve this evening's council agenda? Mike Remington, so moved. Second, McHenry. We have a motion by Council Member Remington and a second by Council Member McHenry to approve this evening's agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, with that, do we have a motion to approve this evening's consent agenda? Mike Remington, so moved. Second, McHenry. We have a motion by Council Member uh, Mayor Pertem Remington and a second by Council Member McHenry to approve this evening's consent agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, and with that, um, do we have any public comments this evening uh, that have been submitted in writing? Clerk Wyckoff. Yes, uh, we received one just this afternoon, which I have forwarded to council. Um, in summary, this is from Sean, and I apologize if I'm butchering the last name. Rinders, uh, VP of baseball with Snow, Snow Valley North Little League, wanted to send a quick note about the planned expansion of Big Rock Ball Fields. Personally, as a member of the community with two boys age 11 and 14, our family is hoping the expansion will include more ball fields to provide increased opportunities to keep our kids active. This, as a leader of our local little league where I have served as vice president of baseball for the past few years, I believe there are significant ben benefits to adding more baseball fields specifically. As our community continues to grow from construction of new homes, more families will be residing within our local, local league boundary, meaning we will likely see increased registration numbers in the years ahead. More registration means more teams and we already struggle to allocate enough field time to split between the ones we have. Having more baseball fields provides the league and the city a greater ability to service our community. Additionally, these fields would allow for hosting events, which would generate revenue for the city and local businesses. 
These are two reasons of the many. I believe adding baseball fields would be a wise decision. Great, thank you. Is there anyone on the line um, in the participant side that would like to issue public comment this evening? And if so, the clerk will unmute you and you will have three minutes to speak. Mayor Lisa Yeager has her hand raised. All right, Lisa, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Lisa Yeager, address 4610 Stevens Avenue, Carnation, Washington. I'm the director of the Snow Valley Senior Center. And I'm here today on behalf of the Snoqualmie Valley Local Advocacy Team. We're a coalition of Valley human service providers led by CarePoint Free Clinic, Empower Youth Network, Encompass, the Far East Senior Hub, Snow Valley Senior Center, Snoqualmie Valley Transportation, and Trail Youth. So first, I want to thank you for your unparalleled leadership and commitment to the citizens of Duval. You've consistently shown that you care, and you've gone out of your way to think outside the box and meet the needs of your residents. And we nonprofits appreciate working with you. As we each move to reopen, you may be wondering what the current human service needs are in, the, in Duval. And I'm here to share a few of these needs with you tonight. So a number one, a child's early years lies the foundation for all that is to come. And Cur Encompass currently has a long and growing wait list for both their summer camp and preschool. And more than 75 kids are waiting for behavioral health services. Secondly, we continue to hear from youth and parents about struggles with depression and anxiety. Empower Youth Network and Trail Youth are working closely with schools, healthcare, and county partners to increase access to and knowledge of key resources and supports. And then third, our senior citizens are impacted by food insecurity and the lack of in-person programming is affecting both their mental and physical health. Snow Valley Senior Center continues to seek creative ways to keep seniors engaged, nourished, and active. Fourth, many people seen by the CarePoint Free Clinic have put off visits longer than they should have, which compounds their medical needs. Staffed by volunteers, they struggle to meet the growing needs of those who fall between the cracks of the system. So as the city continues to receive COVID relief funding, the local advocacy team asked that a large portion of that funding be allocated to human service organizations to help meet the increasing needs of Duval. We also request that the city continue to increase human services funding in general so that they are available for people living in Duval. And this includes incorporating human services into your comprehensive plan and allocating funding that covers the full cost of the services we all provide for your residents. That's what I have to say from the, um, from the advocacy group. Together, we're building a strong, resilient community, and together we can meet our residents and neighbors where they are, pitch in to reinforce strengths and build skills, and provide opportunities for everyone to reach their full potential. And then on a little side note, the Snow Valley Senior Center is um, seeking funding to build low-income senior housing in Carnation. So just FYI that that's something that we're working on and um, that we do serve a, a large number of Duval residents and we can't wait to see people back. We're hoping to reopen um, August 2nd to uh, lunch in person and fitness classes. So thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. It's always great to hear from you. Um, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak this evening? All right, um, seeing none, we'll move on to scheduled items. Uh, first up is mayor's report. Um, been a busy couple of weeks, but lots, uh, much focused on internal um, city operations uh, with some committees um, rolled in. First off, I would want to, I want to congratulate um, the Duval Days Committee led by uh, Kim Pira uh, with music being led by Morgan Henley on their very successful uh, altered Duval Days this weekend. Um, I've heard nothing but great feedback um, about the event um, and how they were able to adapt and pull it off. Um, I think that's a huge win for everyone in the community, um, especially uh, after a tough 
almost 18 months um, and starting to reopen our community to events and uh, bringing people together. Uh, so that's very exciting and uh, looking forward to uh, next year having a full blown event. Um, on my end, uh, the P Puget Sound Regional Project Selection Task Force met last week, still going over basic guidelines um, and requests from within the committee. Um, the, we had, uh, for those that were able to participate, the Sound Cities Association held its first women's leadership forum in uh, quite a while since before COVID. Um, it was a combination of elected officials throughout the county, as well as uh, female uh, leaders within the sponsors and the companies that sponsor the organization, um, as well as some staff members from our surrounding cities. Um, I think it was a fantastic session and there was a lot of discussion about how the pandemic has impacted women in particular, um, as well as cities. And a lot of discussion about um, definitely, I think the desire for all workplaces to change how they do things to ensure uh, that women are, um, especially those women who are uh, primary caretakers of children have more flexibility and options for their work. Um, it was definitely noted how many women have left the workforce as a result of the pandemic um, and what that long term impact is going to be. Um, to say the least, it is going to be huge and devastating to our economy long term as those women try to return back to work and uh, try to recover the salaries that they previously had. Um, so uh, basically, that's it, essentially it is putting women as far as pay equity, et cetera. Um, 18 months, if not up to five years behind their male counterparts that were able to continue working. Um, it's a very real issue um, that will affect people in our community um, and uh, it will be important for everyone to pay close attention to, even if it's not at the policy level of our cities. Um, we also had a, a lot of discussion about how all of us have made it through um, managing multiple roles. Um, you know, there are elected officials that work full-time jobs as well as take care of their children and school their children and serve. Um, and it has been a huge burden on many. Um, we also made sure that there was recognition um, and some discussion just in general of uh, the challenge that many of our city staff have had, uh, especially those that are, were trying to manage a pandemic uh, while maintaining yeah. their normal work as well as taking care of their children. Um, I think over the next couple of years, we are going to see a lot of focus on that. Hold on, honey. Um, and uh, it's something that we need to keep our eye on long term uh, to make sure that uh, in private industry, as well as in government, the equity returns. Um, of acknowledgement, equity has never quite been there, but at least start moving that, that ball to where it needs to be. Um, the Association of Washington Cities Legislative Priorities Committee met uh, within the last couple of weeks as well, um, going over uh, what occurred during the legislative session, which everyone's received the AWC reports, um, and then starting to talk about what moves off of the list and uh, the opportunities for potentially some new items to move on as achievements were, um, were made at the legislative level. Um, the, as I already mentioned, the Association of Washington Cities annual conference is next week. Um, so it is low cost, especially being online. Uh, last I checked, I was the only person from the city of Duval registered. Um, and there really are going to be a lot of great sessions. So even if you can't attend during that scheduled time, I strongly encourage you, each one of you to make the commitment to attend um, at least half the sessions. Um, and uh, the clerk can handle that. It's within the council budget um, to attend these functions. Um, this Friday, um, I have the honor of, of being asked by Associated Washington Cities to moderate a panel that's being filmed in advance for um, to discuss with a few different employees at different cities throughout the state, um, what they're doing on their diversity, equity, and inclusion in light of civil unrest and um, more attention to the racial and social um, justice and equities uh, that we have within our state. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to having that opportunity and also um, hearing firsthand from those folks, uh, the policies and procedures that they're putting in place in their communities. The uh, Sound Cities Association board meets tomorrow. Um, we are at SCA, we are starting to talk about, um, you know, when we get to in-person meetings. 
Uh, the executive board did meet last month um, in person. It, there was fewer than 10 of us. We were able to do it outside. Um, I do have to say that that personal connection um, in, in person was great. We were able to have discussions, of the discussions we used to have about what's going on in our communities outside of our business. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward for all of us to get to that point in the near future. Um, on one other note, uh, Ms. Thomas, Ms. Mason, and I uh, will be doing um, a filming session with OpenGov on Monday. Um, this is really, uh, OpenGov has been invited to do a, a session at the International City Managers Association mm -hmm. Conference in Portland this year. And so our role is basically to talk about, um, you know, what, what our goal, how we came to the city of Duval, um, what our priorities are, uh, what we're looking for in transparency and kind of like the pathway of how we ended up deciding um, what we were gonna do for our transparency software. Um, so that's gonna be really exciting um, with the full recognition we haven't fully implemented yet, but it's a, you know, a good, um, I think a good exercise for the city and, and which we will also likely um, be in receipt of some of that video that we can use um, uh, for city specific stuff um, to our own purposes, which essentially is like having a free videographer for some things. So um, that's really exciting and we're looking forward to that. Um, a quick COVID update. Um, as of today, King County is over the 70% threshold for having 70% um, of eligible uh, um, uh, people fully, uh, I believe Vermont was the first state to um, hit that threshold. I think they're at 80%. Um, as we know, Seattle hit that, that threshold a couple of weeks ago, which was the first major uh, city in the country to do so. And our East region, uh, the last I checked, which was not today, that we were over 85% fully vaccinated in the 98019 zip code and up to Snow Skykomish. Um, and that is an absolutely incredible accomplishment um, that I, I want to commend uh, not just our community members, but all of the community members within the Snoqualmie Valley um, who've taken that step um, to protect themselves and others by, by getting vaccinated. Um, we did have our King County Public Health meeting this morning, and the word is that uh, state the state may reopen early. Um, they are getting closer. I, I was did not have the opportunity to pull the um, current numbers on the state, but it is very possible that the state will be opening before June thirtieth. Um, so that would be good for um, especially the Fourth of July weekend forthcoming. Additionally, uh, news came out today that. Uh, because King County has met that 70% threshold, the King County Mass Directive will end on June 29th. Um, so that will include all indoor spaces. Um, that said, businesses have a right to ask if folks are vaccinated. They have a right to require masks. Um, and I would encourage all members of the public to respect those private businesses' wishes. Um, they very well may have immunocompromised employees or customers um, for which uh, they do not know yet how how effective um, those vaccines are going to be when they're around unvaccinated individuals. Um, I did pull up uh, before this meeting. Um, I'll just read just a second here. Um, <clears throat> some information from King County on herd immunity. <coughs> I apologize, lots of talking today. My, my throat is dry. Um, so this comes straight from the update we received today. Um, Dr. Duchin is quoted as saying, for a number of reasons, I think that true herd immunity, meaning the absolute blockade of transmission in the population is probably not going to happen. But I think that what is very realistic is that we will be able to achieve sufficient level of immunity through vaccination to protect our population from the most serious health effects of COVID-19, hospitalization and death. And hopefully if people become vaccinated in great numbers, drive number, the number of cases down dramatically it's somewhat anal analogous to the influenza situation where we have vaccines each year that can prevent serious morbidity, mortality, prevent hospitalizations, but mild cases do occur, transmission does occur, and we have to live in equilibrium with a virus going forward. He added, I think that high level population immunity is probably more realistic than true herd immunity. 
Um, so this is really important to recognize um, because in addition, the numbers, um, I believe it's 95% of new COVID cases are in unvaccinated individuals. And those cases tend to be more severe and lead to more hospitalizations based on current data. Um, so it's a reminder that while we are getting back to normal, um, it's still important to pay attention and be respectful of others um, who may not be able to have that protection that the rest of us have. Um, so with that, that's the end of my report. Are there any questions? Seeing none, um, we do not have any council members that uh, said that they would like to speak this evening. So we'll move on to council committee reports. Uh, first up is finance and, and administration with Chair Remington. We're uh, continuing to work on um, our procurement policy. Uh, that'll be one of our top priorities. Um, there's several other things administrative and finance wise that uh, we'll be working on as well uh, and bringing before council over the next uh, few months. I, I do wanna take just a, a moment uh, along with the mayor to, to give a plug for the Association of Washington Cities. Uh, they have uh, General James Mattis that will be speaking. There's key topics on local planning, uh, bridging that funding gap with transportation projects, uh, economic development they're talking about. Uh, and for those that uh, haven't had their open gov training uh, and that's required every four years for all of us that are council members uh, that they have a session on that as well. So there's a lot of things for us to be able to dive in and, and be able to do online. Uh, that's all I had, Mayor, thank you. Great, thank you, Mayor Partem. And so next we will move on to uh, land use with Chair Hogue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we did have a meeting yesterday. Um, those in attendance were Director Thomas, Councilmember Naplin, Councilmember Langel, and Osella Chavez. And so at that meeting, we did spend most of our meeting talking about the Duval Village commercial deferment. We also discussed the sign code update that, that we've been working on. Um, Item three was code enforcement regarding fencing and four commercial signage and new technology. Those two items we're moving to next Monday. So we'll be having a meeting on, um, on Monday um, after the open gov meeting. So um, yeah, it, um, that's all I have to report. All right, thank you. Moving on to public safety, Chair Bernicki. Uh, we did not have a meeting this week, but we will have one at the end of the month. Great, thank you. Moving on to Public Works, Chair McHenry. Thank you. So we just had a meeting on June 10th, and it was Director Lenshevsky, myself, Mayor Pratem Remington, and Council Member Schaefer in attendance. Uh, things we discussed were uh, the Third Avenue design. They're closing RFPs on June 17th. There will be review with a panel. Um, the Big Rock Park East parcel, uh, they were still working on the, you know, a partnership and the grant going through the property details and um, looking at the uh, parks, trails, and open space space plan, sorry. Um, so still moving forward on that. Um, they are scheduling and arranging work, which mostly includes renting a mower and um, going out down by the river where we are looking at the Frisbee Gulf. Um, so that will keep moving as well. And roadway projects, the complete streets, they're scheduling and arranging work. There's several potential projects being considered before one's chosen. So still going in that process. Pavement overlay plans, about 60% progress, and they're aiming to advertise in June. Telemetry is going to go out very soon um, for an RFQ bid. And then they're planning some work for the police station. So they've been going through and working with them to find out what all needs to get done, how much it's going to cost. So still working through that as well as some potential add-ons. A uh, final plat for Toll Brothers, we discussed briefly about, you know, just how much we want to get in depth with that um, with council. And then lastly, we spoke about Woodenville Duval Road. Uh, that was the intersection we brought up at one of the last council meetings. And so we've just started discussions about that. 
basically what are our options? I mean, you know, in terms of the entire uh, intersection getting redesigned, that is a long ways down the road. But are there things we can do in the meantime to help ease some of the congestion there? So staff just discussed um, needing to reach out and talk with WashDOT and looking at operational efficiencies, updating the controller, signal sensors, integrating into ITS. And um, in terms of, you know, when the police go out and work manually work that intersection, there's a coordination with King County at the other intersection at West Snoqualmie Road and Woodenville Duval Road. So, um, but that had gone away for a little bit. So trying to work that out again. And then also we're gonna need to look at the role of electeds in this process and how we coordinate and work together to just keep advocating for this. So that's about all we discussed. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions for Chair McHenry? Seeing none, we'll move on to the ad hoc committees. Um, first up is council procedures and code of conduct update with Chair Hoke. Thank you, Mayor. So we did have a meeting yesterday. Um, our city clerk, Jody Wyckoff, is doing a great job of keeping us on task. <laughs> um, council member McHenry, council member Brignicki was there. And also our interim city administrator, Mr. Cotton joined us, which was really great to hear his perspective on things. Um, it's definitely going slower than we had thought. Our goal is to get through chapters one through four yesterday, but we realized it wasn't, it didn't happen. Um, so we're going to start having longer meetings because I, we we all feel that we really did well on chapter one. <laughs> we did, um, uh, you know, it just, I think that we're we're getting through it really good. So it's just a matter of um, keeping at it and keeping the momentum going. But um, I think our biggest uh, lift will be the committee procedures, which will be coming up in the next couple of meetings. Um, so we may want to be going to council for input on that portion of it. But um, but that is it. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions for Chair Hogue? Seeing none, we'll move on to the Human Services Grant Policy, which we also have a report on here tonight. So Chair McHenry. Yeah, so I'll just leave it at we met, uh, we discussed and came up with a proposed uh, grant allocation, but we can talk about that more when it comes up on the agenda. All right, thank you. Um, okay, moving on to administration update with Interim City Administrator, Mr. Ryan Cotton and Community Development Director DCA, Ms. Lara Thomas. Um, I don't have a lot to say. I just wanna suggest that everyone give yourselves a pat on the back with all of the activities going on. It's really incredible um, accomplishments um, underway. Um, I will say that uh, I'll be in touch with each of you uh, very shortly, as I mentioned in the Committee of the Whole about traits and qualifications you're looking for in your next uh, city administrator. And also uh, please recognize that if you don't see my uh, face after a bit, um, I have to be at the airport uh, later on tonight, so I'll need to sign off. And uh, that is why. Thank you very much. Thank you. Laura? Good evening, Mayor and Council. I will be hopefully fairly quick. I wanted to give just a quick update on code enforcement complaints and requests. That's pretty much the terminology that we use within the city and that our members of our community um, have for us as well. Currently, we have a process that is through our website, through Civic Plus. It's called Request Tracker, and it's for general, kind of general information, public works and maintenance, and some police as well. I've actually created just a snapshot of what it looks like if you go into it. It does require you to sign up to use the tracker, and it does not uh, include land use, but you can see that uh, maintenance has quite a few items. Uh, police has um, an abandoned, you know, abandoned vehicles and speed patrol. Um, there's like noise complaints, storm water, and um, animal nuisances. So it is pretty robust. I did do a sample run of it today because I wanted to see how it looked on the interface and what it looked like for the from a public perspective as well as an internal perspective. And so I did just a test run. I said City Hall had a lot of construction noise. It was just a test. Um, so I filled in what it would look like. 
and then I talked with Jody and said, okay, now what does it look like on, on your end? And so this is what it looks like. So what happens is uh, I get an uh, a email back essentially that says it is being tracked and then it gets assigned. And so this particular one was assigned to Jody. So what we do is it gets first assigned internally. Um, Jody is pretty much the gatekeeper for the majority of them. And then what happens is staff gets emailed, the correct department does. Sometimes it includes more than one department. So sometimes like public works planning or building will all get um, tagged in it. Um, then what we do is we go out, usually it requires a site visit. So we'll go out and do a site visit. Um, staff makes contact um, usually with like the homeowner or the business, whichever one it is. And then what we try to do is we try to resolve, obviously, that complaint or that enforcement action is in a time and as timely manner as we can. And then we continually keep track with the city clerk to let her know how we're doing. And then we eventually close out that record. Um, one of the, the minor challenges of using the Civic Plus model is that it doesn't have a great tracking mechanism for us, and so it just it's it's not easy for us to keep track of them after they've gone away or if they come back. It's not in like some sort of module per se, like you would if you had a building permit module. Um, some of the departments also use some sort of like activity log as they go through the process. So this is just an example of community development. So this is a log that we use. I did black out because this is one that we're using currently. So I took out uh, some of the information, but you can see we use this um, from start to finish. So you can see all the different actions that we've taken and then the notes as well. We're also now implementing a master time log to track them as well, because we've seen such an uptick in requests and enforcement. And um, I've been working with the mayor to let her know that it's taking up more of our time uh, last year and this year. And we expect that to probably continue. Um, land use can be somewhat complex, so can building. Sometimes it takes us significantly longer um, to do something, because sometimes we'll get a request in for tree maintenance right on a corner that's pretty easy to do in a, in a timely manner but if you have a complex um, activity then it, it can take a while so looking forward what are we doing moving forward the near term we're going to um, add land use to the civic plus request tracker so that they can come in because what happens right now is we, you know usually we get an email or a phone call and then we put them into the system so we'd like to be able to allow our citizens to put it into the system themselves but if they do call we obviously will put that put it in there for them we don't make somebody go through the tracker system we're also going to add an anonymous checkbox we're allowed to by state statute to protect people that might have a complaint um, the midterm, we're looking at one of our existing softwares, and that's ActiveAub. That's a public work software that was budgeted and has been implemented for several years now. They do have a, um, a code enforcement module, so we're beginning to look at that and how that could integrate with our existing system, which is our website. We're also going to engage OpenGov on similar module requests. So we haven't done that yet, but that's one of our next steps. And then again, whatever uh, mechanism we choose, we want to look at the, compa the compatibility of the software. The long term, you know, my job is going to be to provide the mayor with options and recommendations to consolidate essentially the existing process. So that's requests, complaints, and code enforcement. Um, really for the purpose of efficiency, which is our time, communication with staff and administration, record keeping and reporting out to, you know, to the community and the council and also to other departments. Uh, if any, if anybody has a question, I can take that. I'm not seeing any questions, Ms. Thomas. Thank you. All right. So we will go ahead and move on um, to our uh, presentation for firework safety. Um, this was uh, scheduled to be a joint presentation by King County Fire District 45 and Acting Chief DeBach. Um, we received word um, during Committee of the Whole that Chief Burke is unable to make it this evening. Um, so we will uh, let Acting Chief DeBach take it away 
And just of note, this is a high level presentation on firework safety and what our existing uh, policies are not a discussion um, at this point on what the city does with fireworks. However, um, if there is desire for council to have um, a larger conversation, we can start that in public works and bring it to the committee of the whole at a future date. So with that, Acting Chief DeBach, uh, you may take it away. Sorry, I was still on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, uh, members of council. Uh, directors and the members of the community. I'm going to try to sh share my screen here. So let's see how this works. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay. So as the mayor said, I'm here tonight to discuss uh, fireworks with only a uh, couple weeks away from Ju July 4th. I think it's very relevant that we uh, go over some of the uh, rules and regulations uh, governing the use. So under Duval Municipal Code 510.055, it's unlawful for a person to, uh, hold on, I can't see my screen, sorry. <laughs> it's unlawful for a person to ignite, discharge, use, or explode any firework in the city of Duval except between the hours of 9 a.m. and 11 p.m. on July 4th, and except pursuant to a permit or public display of fireworks which would be like we had last weekend with Duval Day. So thank you for everyone who's attended that. Any person who violated this section will be, sub be guilty of a misdemeanor punishable by a fine of not more than $500 or six months in jail. A person commits a separate offense for each day during which he commits, continues, or permits a violation. Um, Jody, can you uh, roll through the slides? Uh, we're still on... I'm the not, I'm not in control of his screen. So, um, I, Mike, if you want to stop sharing, I, I'll pull it up and I can share mine. Okay, perfect. I'll do that. Did it stop sharing? Um, it's it stopped sharing so the clerk can get it up and then um, hopefully scrolls through the slides. I know sometimes on some computers, uh, it doesn't work as well as it should. So um, we, I'm sure Jody can help make sure that happens. I will. Oh. Do I need to close out of that? Nope, I got it. I just, I started the presentation and then realized I can't do that and be on the screen at the same time. So, okay. Now, is this where you were at? I know, keep going. So this is it, Jody. Okay. Under uh, code 51056, the uh, fire chief responsible for the city of Duval's fire protection is requested to make recommendation to prohibit the ignition or discharge of fireworks within the city limits of Duval whenever the fire danger components and indexes have reached or exceeded levels as set forth in determining extreme fire dangers. Upon completion of such recommendations and considerations of other relevant factors, the mayor may enact a temporary ban on the discharge of fireworks in the interest of public safety. You can go to the next slide. It is not legal to discharge fireworks on public property, public streets, sidewalks, parking lots, or school property. It is also not legal to discharge fireworks in any Washington State Park or King County Park or on federal land, including those managed by the Department of Natural Resources and the US Forest Service. Next slide. So I'm gonna provide you with, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna provide Hi. you with an ex <laughs> some examples of some uh, legal fireworks. So these are uh, potential fireworks that you will see on the 4th of July that are legal. You can go to the next slide. I'm not gonna go through each one of these, but I'll leave these up. But again, these are legal fireworks that are allowed to be uh, ignited on the fourth. Next slide. Okay. So uh, now I'm gonna provide you with some example of legal, illegal fireworks. And these consist of firecrackers, sky, sky rockets or missiles, bottle rockets, M80s or M100s, improvised explosive devices or IEDs and an altered fireworks. <clears throat> you can go to the next slide, Jody. I'd like to provide you with a three-year 
comparison from 2018 to 2020 for our department's calls for service regarding fireworks or fireworks related incidents. Next slide. In 2018, the police department responded to five calls for service. Three of them happened between June 15th and July 15th. In 2019, we responded to eight calls for service. Seven were between June 15th and July 15th. And in 2020, we had another eight calls for service where three happened between June 15th and July 15th. The majority of the other calls throughout the year happen or occur on New Year's Eve. Uh, 2018, the, the additional two calls was on New Year's Eve. 2019, we had one call. And then 2020, we had three calls on New Year's Eve. The other two occurred on uh, January 25th, which happened to be the NHL's uh, All-Star Game. So I don't know if we had any hockey fans out there. And then the 410 was uh, Good Friday. And then I believe that was also National Siblings Day. So maybe it was someone was celebrating there. Next slide. Ready to go? Can you go to the next? Oh, there it is. I did. Yep. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> in uh, April of 2021, oh, it ended. <laughs> in April 2021, King County Council approved legislation that would ban fireworks in unincorporated King County starting in January of 2022. If it's a firework, so if it's anything that's on that list that we just saw, both the legal and illegal currently, it will not be legal in unincorporated King County after January. So properly permitted professional displays will still be allowed though. And that is it. All right. Thank you. Does um, anybody have any questions for Acting Chief Abbott? Mayor Pro Tem Remington and then Council Member Hogue. Well, thank you, Mayor. Um, Chief, just the excellent, I uh, appreciated the uh, information and some of the data. Uh, it is legal here. I, I don't think all our citizens understand that uh, setting fireworks off and cul-de-sacs and city roadways is not legal uh, because that's probably where most of them wind up going off. Um, I, I wanted to just say I, I had a chance from my home to be able to watch the Duval Days fireworks display and it was one of the finest displays I had seen and I, I hope we as a community more and more get into the community event versus trying to do them individually. Uh, I, I think those kind of events are very well received. It has a big economic impact often for downtown businesses as people gather and want to go out for a bite to eat or get their ice cream cone. Uh, they're certainly much safer and uh, so I, I just encourage as we move forward, more and more folks to uh, take advantage of those. And that we as council consider having a 4th of July event uh, in our downtown park to encourage people to take advantage of uh, a community event. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, council Member Hoke. Thank you. So I guess my, my thoughts are a year from now, Unincorporated King County will no longer um, be able to light off fireworks. Or, and so I'm just wondering how a year from now, if we're going to see an impact. So I appreciate the statistics on you know, calls and, and so forth. So I think that's really important to kind of be tracking how things, you know, if, if it's going to affect, if more people are going to be coming into the city limits a year from now or not. I mean, so this will be, it'll be good to track. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I'm sorry, I lost my connection. So I, I apologize for that. Um, was that directed towards me, Councilmember Hogue? Yes, yes. So I, I, I foresee that you, there is a potential, you know, if we do uh, continue to allow fireworks on the 4th and then um, King County goes ahead um, with the banning, um, there is the possibility that yes, we will have to, we'll have additional folks coming into our city to ignite those. Um, and if we decide to uh, address that issue, we're gonna have to you know, consider additional things such as overtime coverage because the officers working on a holiday are gonna get triple time doing so. And then additional staffing issues as well. Right now we're currently understaffed and we're actively pursuing uh, applicants. So um, that would be other considerations we have to take. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Schaefer. Yeah, I, I uh, 
you know, just thinking about this, uh, they'd have to come into town. They'd actually have to have uh, uh, know somebody here in town to legally shoot those off because it would have to be on private property, not you know on city property or any kind of public uh, you know public property. Um, my expectation is, you know, if they're worried about breaking the law in the uh, in the county outside of Duval, uh, they're probably not going to come into Duval and break the law in Duval by setting off their fireworks, uh, you know, in the street or, or elsewhere. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd, I'd frankly be surprised if we see, you know, a increase uh, on July, you know, July 4th of next year uh, when the law is in, in effect. And frankly, I've talked to a few people uh, that uh, actually they weren't even aware of the, uh, of the King County uh, uh, regulation being passed, but they basically shrugged their shoulders and said, we're gonna keep on doing what we're doing, which isn't a surprise. Uh, so uh, I'm hoping that uh, Duval will not see uh, an increase or influx of uh, out of town people. Thank you, Council Member Schaefer. Um, I'm not seeing any others, but I will just say, um, you know, we, we've had lots of discussions over the years um, and somehow I, I've missed um, over the time that it's actually illegal to do fireworks on the sidewalks and the streets, which is actually where the majority of our residents light their, their fireworks off. Um, so um, there are you know, further opportunities for public messaging down the line um, with that. Uh, obviously not this year, but especially as King County puts our ban in place. Um, I think there's going to be newer opportunities and uh, especially as density increases uh, I suspect we'll have fewer and fewer people lighting off fireworks as it goes. Um, so um, hopefully, hopefully continued education will keep us in a good spot. Um, so thank you very much for doing the work uh, to bring forward the presentation. Uh, we miss Chief Burke. Um, would have been nice if he could be here, but uh, he did an excellent job and thank you for that presentation. Thank you, Mayor. All right, so moving on, um, we do not have a public hearing, but we do have an executive session to discuss qualifications of applicant for a public employment under RCW 42.30.110 sub 1 sub G. Um, we uh, are starting this at 10 minutes. Um, I suspect it will go longer. Um, and if so, uh, we'll, I will send a message to the clerk uh, who will announce it to the public. Uh, I believe the clerk has a screen that will tell um, tell folks that we are in executive session and that the meeting is still going. Um, and with that, uh, we will go to executive session and um, upon that, uh, resume our remaining business.
For the record, this is Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. The executive session has been extended 10 minutes.
For the record, this is Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. The executive session has been extended an additional 30 minutes, or excuse me, 10 minutes.
for the record, this is Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. The executive session has been extended an additional 15 minutes.
For the record, this is Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. The executive session has been extended an additional 15 minutes.
For the record, this is Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. The executive session has been extended an additional 10 minutes.
Coming back in now. All right, are we all back? All right, um, seeing um, everyone back in the room, we'll go ahead and move on to new business. Um, first is agenda bill 21-56A, motion to cancel the regular August 3rd, 2021 Committee of the Whole and City Council meetings for discussion and or decision. Um, preference would be if folks are in agreement to suspend the rules and approve this motion this evening. Any discussion? Councilmember Langel. To make a motion to suspend the rules. Second, McHenry. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, next agenda bill, agenda bill 21-57A, confirm Mayor um, Okerland. Sorry, oh, you I'm just sorry. suspended right. the rules. <laughs> okay. Right. It's been a it's been a thirteen hour day already. Okay. Um, so uh, would be happy to entertain a motion on agenda bill twenty one dash fifteen six a unless there is discussion prior. Councilmember Langle. Oh wait, I don't have my agenda bill. Uh, make a motion. I should have written down the agenda bill. I'm sorry. I can't do two screens at once. I make a motion to uh, approve the agenda bill. Uh, regarding our meeting on August the 3rd, canceling it. All right. Fill in the blank. Right, Nikki. All right, we have a motion by Council Member Langle and a second by Council Member Brittnicki to um, cancel our regular August 3rd, 2021 Committee of the Whole and City Council meetings. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, next agenda bill, agenda bill 21-57A, confirm Mayor Okerlander's appointment of Jamie Kemper to the Duval Civil Service Commission position one, a six year term ending 4-1-2027. Um, and just of note, this was um, an administrative issue. The uh, normally uh, commissioners would be simply reapported with support, with support of um, the commission um, and a simple process, but we did advertise because the position lapsed um, and went through the formal process to accept applicants from the public. Mr. Kempers was the only one received. Um, and uh, this again, first touch, we normally approve, council normally approves these on the first touch, um, normally not su suspending the rules, but you've been doing a great job of following process. So um, if you would like to do so, um, I would happy, be happy to entertain a motion to suspend the rules. Mayor Mike Remington, I move we suspend our three touch rule. All right, we have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Remington and a second by Council Member Naplin to suspend the three touch rule. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, and with that, do we have a motion to approve Mr. Kemper's appointment to the Civil Service Commission? Mayor Mike Remington, I move that council approve agenda bill 21-57A, confirm Mayor Okerlander's appointment of Jamie Kemper to the Duval Civil Service Commission, position one, a six year term ending 4-1-2027. Do we have a second? Second, Right, we have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Remington is second by Council Member Schaefer. Um, Mr. Kemper was on the line. Uh, it looks like he may have left at this point. Um, normally we'd provide him an opportunity to speak. So with that, um, I will go ahead and ask for the vote. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. 
Um, moving on to agenda bill 21-58A, resolution for continued support of the city wellness program. Um, this is a, a annual process. And just so you know, um, that uh, this is another one that you can either suspend your rules or put it on consent if that's uh, if you so choose. So Ms. Wyckoff and Ms. James. Good evening, Mayor and Council, Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. Um, would like to introduce Sherry Chain James, my Administrative Assistant 3, um, who is the Chair of our Wellness Committee. As one of our requirements, we are required to request a resolution of support from Council. And along with that, we are going to give a very brief, because we know it's late, uh, quick, quick uh, presentation just to give you an update on what we've been up to and what we plan to do in the next coming months. Sherry, are you going to share your screen or am I sharing mine? Um, I've got it up, uh, the presentation up, if you want me to go ahead and give it a shot here. Okay. We'll go through it very, yeah, five minutes. working. Can you Order. see that, Jody? Yep, go ahead and move to the next slide. Okay. Now I've lost. Is the arrow bar, if you don't see it. It's gone. <laughs> It's because you're sharing your screen. Okay, go ahead and stop sharing. I think I've got it now. Oh, okay. Okay, let's start at the beginning. <laughs> okay. okay, so the wellness committee, um, we have, uh, I think there's nine people on the committee now. Um, we, we started out the year with, I believe, uh, four of us, and now we've um, added on some some new members uh, this year, uh, three of them who are from the police department. Um, <clears throat> so we're really happy to see that and get some fresh faces on the committee and some new ideas. So COVID kind of put um, a crimp in our, in our, uh, our wellness committee. So we're gonna try and get back to uh, what we consider normal conditions uh, and try to increase our our campaign participation. Um, seems like there's a few of us who always do it. And so we're always trying to get other people to, to join into the activities uh, that we offer. And uh, like, and the last bullet point is to recruit some new members and we have been doing that. So that's great. And this is just kind of a summary of what we are trying to accomplish for the 2021 year. Uh, we do have a, a farmer's market coupon program that we're, we're doing where we um, offer people coupons to supplement their purchases at the farmer's market every week. And that seems really popular and they can uh, go down there and pick up fruits and vegetables uh, every week at the market. Um, in July and August, uh, sometime soon, we're gonna be having a, an employee appreciation day and hope to do something special for everybody and just kind of take a break and have lunch together. <clears throat> so that's the kind of the summary of the year. And then, so we just would hope that you would support uh, the resolution. Um, it, it affords the city a 2% savings on our medical premiums every year, uh, which equates to about $15,000 a year for 2021. So uh, it's a valuable program. So we hope you, you support it. Anything else, Jody, that I might have forgotten? I don't think so. Um, besides me saying, oops, I forgot a zero on 15,000. Oh. <laughs> and B, that uh, Sherry stepped up uh, when Mr. Tozer stepped down from being chair. Sherry stepped up and she has been doing a great job keeping us on task and, and helping lead the way with the wellness committee. And we are here to answer any questions, should you have any. Councilmember Bernicki and then Mayor Pertem Remington. Uh, I just want to say I remember when you first initiated the program, Jody, and I was dubious as like, how is this going to work? But it's grown and I see the benefits and I totally think it's a great idea. So thank you for continuing it. 
Thank you. Right. Mayor Pertemp. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, well, Sherry, I just want to personally say thank you for, for taking on the chair position. Uh, it really is important work. I thank get you. that not everybody's flocking to be on the committee, but the reality is uh, encouraging people to have good health and take care of ourselves is so important in life. And, uh, and the work itself, uh, like I say, not only saves us some money in our insurance, but hopefully leads to healthier uh, employees and Hope to see that program grow in the future and other good ideas so we can both recognize and support our employees. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> um, any further questions for Ms. James? Seeing none, would you like to suspend your rules, um, put this on the consent or um, keep it on unfinished business at the next meeting? Councilmember Schaefer, you're on mute in case I thought I saw you raise your hand. Let me repeat that then. Sorry about that. <laughs> I move we suspend the three touch rule for AB 2158A. My crew in second. All right. We have a first and a second. Um, by first by Councilmember Schaefer, a second by Mayor Partem Remington to suspend the rules. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, with that, uh, would someone like to make a motion on Agenda Bill 21-58A? I'd like to move that we approve Agenda Bill 21-58A, Resolution Continued Support of City Wellness Program. Second, Rednicki. Right, we have a motion by Council Member Hogue, a second by Council Member Rednicki um, to approve a resolution for continued support of the city wellness program. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, with that, moving on to agenda bill 21-59A, approve human service grant allocations. Um, this would normally be led by finance director Mason. I understand that council member McHenry is chair of the committee. Um, is ready to, um, to uh, present to council. Um, so with that, you have the floor. And Sherry's here as your backup. <laughs> okay, I was like, okay, let me, uh, I guess I am ready. Hold on one second. I think I had this up. I just wanted to maybe share. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm sorry, I didn't fully have this ready. Um, Oh, share the... I think I have, well, do you, I think I can just share our um, scoring sheets. Do you want the agenda bill stuff? Yeah, or I can just pull this up. Maybe the agenda bill is a little cleaner, but oh. um, can yeah. everyone see this okay? Or if the format's not great here, I can shift this a tiny little bit. So you can't really see the questions. Um, anyways, this is the um, scoring matrix that we all inputted under different tabs. And then the totals came up on this summary sheet. I think everyone can appreciate Director Mason's Excel skills are amazing. Um, so in your packet was all the information we had. If you wanted to go in depth and read through it, you can. Um, so basically up at the very top, right up here, you can see the requested amount and then the award. Um, you know, everyone scored really well. I mean, these are all great organizations and that's a pretty hard job to figure out um, who to give what to when, you know, you don't have enough money to cover all of the requests. So we really used our scores down here to help guide us. And we were also trying to be aware of the fact that, you know, if you try to spread it too thin, the administrative cost to that organization to, utilize a small, maybe insignificant amount of money, you know, so we've tried to weigh that, but we did ultimately give everyone something or propose it at least. So for Acres of Diamonds, they had requested $2,500 and we recommend 2000 Empower Youth Network requested 10 and we recommend giving 8000 Encompass requested 5000 we recommend 3000 Friends of Youth requested 2,000 and we recommend 2,000. Um, Holy Innocence, 7,000 requested and we recommend the full seven. And then Snoqualmie Valley um, Senior Center 
requested 10,000 and we recommend 8,000. So I'm not sure, um, you know, if I should just open it up for any questions or if council member Hogue or uh, Miss James have anything they want to add to this. Uh, I do think, you know, everyone's in agreement. We might tweak things a little bit um, for next time and we're going to do it right away. So, but this is something that we want to move on quickly. So if anyone has suggestions or want to change it, you know, that would be something we'd want to do tonight so we can distribute this money quickly. Council Member Hogue. The only thing I might add, um, I appreciate you presenting <laughs> Council Member McHenry, but um, prior to doing the scoring, we actually went through each question. We had a meeting where we went through each question and modified how much we would give to each question. And we put a lot of time and thought into it. So as it all played out and we, you know, we individually scored them on our own and then came together with this total number. And it just, I, I was really, it was so, I was so grateful for everybody that was on this committee and, and, um, and of course, Dana for her Excel <laughs> abilities, because it really kind of felt like it all worked out, but I do look forward to hearing from council if they have any questions. Yeah, the scoring um, questions are really important as well as the weight given to them and just kind of a recap of where we put our, the emphasis is, for example, is uh, obviously organizations that serve city of Duval residents and also organizations who have an emphasis on volunteers versus paid administrative staff. Um, that's not completely avoidable, obviously, but we just, those were a lot of the things we looked at. And there's a lot more, um, you know, grant requests than there have been, you know, at least since I've been here. So it's definitely a little more of a process than, you know, it was before. All right, any other questions for Council Member McHenry? Um, so with that, I know it's the first time folks are seeing this, but I know uh, everyone is also anxious to get the money out the door. Um, is Council interested in suspending the rules and approving this evening? Council Member Schaefer. Oh, I had to see if I was on mute or not. Okay. <laughs> I, I move we suspend the three touch rule on uh, AB 2159. Second, Rednicki. All right, all those in favor of suspending the rules, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And with that, would someone like to make a motion on the underlying motion? Or, I'm sorry, underlying agenda bill. I move that we approve AB 21-59, approve human services grant allocations. Second, McHenry. All right, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And with that, I'll just say thank you for um, those that volunteered for the committee and Thank you again to council for um, increasing the amount of allocations to human services in the budget from um, our baseline that we propose. Um, it's a good time to be supporting the agencies and um, I'm hopeful that our, our continued funding support will provide uh, good support for them. So thank you all. Um, moving on to agenda bill 21-60B. Uh, we are going to postpone this until uh, for a special meeting on the 29th. Uh, for the public's context, um, context, this is uh, um, due to the fact of agreement language was not finalized um, until um, late afternoon. Um, council, uh, rightfully so, would like to noodle on it for a week, um, which is not uncommon with uh, employment agreements with employees. And so uh, we will be having um, a special meeting on Tuesday, um, June 29th. Time to be determined. Uh, the clerk will send out an email and get times. Uh, my initial thoughts are to potentially have it um, that meeting in the middle of the day if it works for folks right after the public safety committee meeting, uh, because we will also um, hopefully hopefully that timing will work out as well for uh, a formal change of command ceremony between uh, the outgoing police chief uh, Carrie Hurt, who's retiring on July first, and um, hopefully. 
very fingers crossed, but I'm pretty darn confident, uh, incoming police chief, uh, Mike DeBach. And uh, that way uh, for um, council's perspective, I'm hoping that um, if that timing works out, uh, we'll advertise it to the public, invite everyone uh, to attend mostly streaming, uh, have as many council members and staff um, in attendance as possible um, and um, really support that that formal ceremony, uh, which I've never had the honor of being a part of and am and looking forward to um, greatly. So um, with that, we do have, I'm gonna ask for a quick motion to extend the meeting. I think that we will be done probably in the next 10 to 15 minutes, um, but uh, doing so, we still need to suspend to move beyond our 9.30 time. Mayor Pro Tem Remington. Mayor, I move that we suspend uh, or that we, uh, Continue the meeting beyond 9.30. Second, Chief. All right. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And with that, moving on to Agenda Bill 21-61B, cooperation. The mayor oh, I'm sorry. We the mayor pro tem has raised his hand. Oh, I'm sorry, I did not see it. I was looking at the agenda. Sorry, Mayor, it may seem kind of odd. I just wanted to make a comment on behalf of the uh, council while we were gonna take time on that last agenda bill to noodle over a contract, which is just a, a technical piece where we, we climb in and take a look at it and language and stuff. But I wanted to just make sure, especially with uh, Mike DeBach here that, uh, you know, it no way reflects on our desire to have him be chief, uh, his qualifications, or the quality he is, we feel so thankful as a city, as council members, uh, to uh, to see his leadership, to uh, see his commitment, and just who he is as a person. We just like the heck out of him. So anyway, uh, while we're taking a little more time to do the business end of a contract, uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, our, both he and our citizens and staff know that uh, uh, he certainly is someone that we uh, fully respect and hope will be our chief. Thank you, Mayor Pratem. That's a good good addition. Um, sometimes I get rolling a little fast, so I appreciate that you you can often take that step back and have a thoughtful comment. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, next up is Agenda Bill 21-61B, cooperation agreement between City of Duval and Soquami Valley North Little League. For discussion and or decision, Mr. Leniszewski. Are you there, Mr. Leniszewski? Oh, there you are. Good evening, Mayor, Council, citizens, and staff. Steve Leniszewski, Public Works. Sorry, I was buried under five different uh, web pages and, and PDFs I had pulled up. Uh, so the item in front of you is the culmination of a couple meetings with uh, committee and Little League, as well as Little League's introduction to the city um, with their grant award that they've received and the intended partnership that we're trying to form to to give you know little league um a fair a fair seat at the table to help us go through the process help them go through the process it's a, a team effort you know they were awarded the funds uh we're lucky enough to have the foresight to have purchased some property that we'd love to develop and to work with the community on what that is so uh what we have done is our legal esteemed legal counsel has worked on wordsmithing Kind of the information we had heard at the at the meeting on what should be in the agreement how can little league be at the table with us how can we move forward as a as a as a unit and you know get them um rolling on the community's behalf with with our i guess support and uh, overall guidance so that result or that agreement you have is is that work we believe all the resolutions and whereas or sorry whereas are, are pertinent and inclusive of what was requested so that is the document we have to share with council. Great. Are there any questions for Mr. Leniszewski? Mm -hmm. Council Member Budnicki. Um, so I, I want to appreciate, I went through the resolution, appreciate the fact that it mentions the public process in it, which is so important. So I'm just trying to understand because this is a very different way of how we go about such a large project that could become millions of dollars. So. As I understand it, they would do a feasibility study 
which I don't know if that incorporates any sort of design or if it just says, oh, you can use X land for such purposes. But um, in the resolution, as it stated, that the city would go through the process of creating, am I understanding this right, creating a public input through like maybe something like in the past, we've done special advisory committees with representatives from various groups in the community. And so that way, what we're talking about, what I'm trying to see here in the vision of all this, because that's a huge citizen owned piece of property um, that the community then has the input to determine how that property is going to go forward with the folks who bring a feasibility study so that you know we're having um, what I would say a good representation because in the past, when we talked about that area, we do have problem with parking and there are people in the community who stated in our surveys about special features in parks and some other items. And so I just want to make sure that that sort of representation was considered. And I have a few other questions about all of this, but I will save them after you answer this one. All right. So I, what I what I expect of the process, assuming we move forward with the agreement, um, Little League, we will go forward and work on selecting a consultant. After we can select the consultant, we would then come forward and I think outline a, a plan of attack and how that would look as far as community input, whether it's surveys of the community electronically, um, open house meetings on site, if we are interested in some sort of small committee. Um, yeah, I think we have ample opportunity. Uh, we need to understand the scope, which which isn't derived in, in full yet. We'll work on working on that with the consultant. But I think we do need to be cognizant of the $25,000 threshold and what we can or can't get out of that. I think we will receive preliminary layout of such. And, and that may include, hey, you know what? We listen to the community and you have a lot of need. Maybe you need more space. Maybe the needs we've heard all fit on this piece. Uh, I, I, we don't know what we'll hear until we hear it, but everybody who has you know, called in that I've spoken to, we're trying to make sure that, hey, we're gonna be doing community outreach, get engaged, get your groups to get engaged, and you know, we'll do our best to push it out, whether it's social media, newsletter, and all that kind of activity. I don't wanna rush things because there are some timelines moving forward, but we do wanna get a big band and broad look at the interests that are on that parcel and I think you start with what are we missing and what doesn't work you know currently out there and then hey what does everybody else see as the vision for that property and and you know move forward from there so I, I think there'll be a, a good outline we'll bring forward after we get into contract I guess I guess my um, question is um, in a more formal sense that there is somebody who is looking and considering a sports complex on the flip side of that, there is interest maybe in a nature trail or open space with um, trail systems and stuff like that. There's no representation or study for that kind of thing because I understand that this feasibility study is not gonna cover that. It is focused in on a sports complex. And so I just wanted to make sure that as we go down this road, because the resolution says the, the community and a public input, and so, so far, I don't feel the, that we have had what we call a public, very public input to this process. And, and that's what I just want, I want to know who's the other person doing the other feasibility for the other items. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. So, so I believe the, the feasibility will come from what we hear, right? Someone will have a professional who, who will help us, you know, pull out what we want as a community and we'll bring that forward. And then they will also be able to see how many of these round pegs they can fit in a square hole on the property and, and what can be done. We're not getting into the exactness of dimensions of fields, but in general, you know, a field will be here, that can be there. The community wanted A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. We believe we can fit A, C, G, and H here. Maybe reconfiguring something over on the other existing piece can help us do, you know, C. So I, I think we have plenty of opportunity to move forward and we haven't heard anything as far as public input yet because we haven't asked for it. Right, we're we're trying to, you know, expedite the the 
available resources, which came to us in a sense as a gift with, you know, Little League's hustle on the other side of this, trying to find some money for field development. I mean, I don't think there's any hiding that. They, they are interested in their journey is field development. Field development doesn't mean, you know, four fields on a piece of land that can have more than just fields. So I think, you know, I've spoken to Little League. We've been very frank with each other. It's nothing's perfect. But we're all just trying to make the best out of what we have. And and nothing is in stone. It's it's fresh. We're starting from here. It's 25 grand. You don't get a lot for 25 grand. We're not getting design. We're not getting anywhere near certainty. Um, I just, you know, it's just more work on the work plan that uh, we get to move forward with. So, so plenty more to come. I just want to then say that um, because we've gone through the whole ball field thing and we know how many millions we can refer to those numbers and the millions that it cost us. And we understand how we had to go to the taxpayer because of the maintenance of those fields and how we had that was not within the sort of plan of the budget and how much that costs. So we went to the taxpayers and asked to, you know, let's get more money folks so we can maintain those fields. And, and the thing I think about when we're going down this road, it seems like we're really moving forward with this, that we also should consider because we're very budget conscious and we talk about money a lot is that we need a park system. If we're gonna bring something like that online and with the new parks coming in with the developments coming in currently, um, at this point, we really have to think about that. So I, I think, you know, before we get too excited, and woo, we have to think about all those other elements of what has to happen. Because I don't think it's fair to go sending somebody out to go start doing feasibility and spending all that money and then getting all excited about design when we don't have all the other systems to support the, um, the investment we're talking about. So that's just... It's just so, my two cents on this. Yeah, and part of that survey strategy, I, you know, just listening to the conversation should be, hey, we may be asking for more resources as time goes on to facilitate more park area. So there's, there's things to consider, and that's a, that's a simple question on a, on a survey. Hey, if we do more, are you willing to pay more kind of thing? And I, I appreciate your, your tenor on that. Um, I do understand. Uh, and back to your point on you know, fiduciary responsibility. I won't say what club, but I had a very great conversation yesterday uh, with one of the clubs who is a, a newer tenant, and they were shocked that this city actually reduced its field rental rates due to COVID just to keep as many kids playing as, as possible. She, she was, she's out there renting anything and everything she can for her club, and nobody has reduced fees at all. And nothing has gotten easier. And so she was very, uh, appreciative of that so anyway she did her homework she was going to make comment tonight but i see she did not so i i have encouraged again all the clubs to participate once we get going down the road but well if we have a parks department they can really assess that and monitor that and make yeah. sure that we are we are um, charging appropriately Love it. <laughs> thank you uh -huh. all right any um further questions for mr leniszewski Council Member Schaefer. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, point out, uh, Diane, that the agreement, and I'm sure you've read it, but the agreement does keep the city in control. Uh, so anything that, uh, any direction that we decide we want to go, any type of survey that we want to do, um, any type, type of uh, preliminary plans that we want to show, will be up to us. Uh, it really is still in our, our, our control. Little League obviously has input on it, but there are no obligations in that uh, agreement to uh, Little League or any other organization. Thank you, Council Member Schaefer. Any other council members want to speak to this item? Council Member Naplin. I just wanted to quickly say that I have made a personal decision to not vote on this item just due to my husband's involvement. I know there's no official conflict of interest, um, but I just am making that personal decision. So, and it's funny because it's, we joke that there, there really isn't an advantage of him being married to me because I, we joke that I'm the dream crusher in the family. So uh, <laughs> his ideas don't necessarily get a pass with me. Um, but anyway, 
I can see Steve, Steve knows our relationship, I think. So <laughs> he's laughing. Anyway. Thank you, Thank you Council Member Naplin. Um, so while it says agenda bill 21-6B, uh, I think it is fair and reasonable to consider this the third touch uh, because it was uh, discussed at committee the whole previously. Um, so if council would like to vote on this this evening, I'm happy to entertain a motion. Mayor Pro Tem Remington. Mayor, uh, I move that council approve agenda bill 21-61B, a cooperation agreement between the city of Duval and Stoquamie Valley North Little League. Second, McHenry. We have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem. Remington and a second by council member McHenry to approve agenda bill 21-61B. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. No. Motion passes um, when, with one no. Um, moving on to agenda bill 21-62A. Accept the city of Duval funding allocation of coronavirus local fiscal recovery funds from the Federal American Rescue Plan Act. Um, this is discussion and or decision. Um, normally, uh, Ms. Mason would um, bring this forward, but again, uh, son's graduation this evening. Um, this is just the formal step we have to take to be able to receive our funds. Um, it is a first touch, um, but the contract won't change. Um, so I would like to request either that council suspend the rules or put it on consent at the next meeting. Um, but I think as far as time and process, it would be much appreciated by Ms. Mason if we could go ahead, if council would go ahead and approve this this evening. I move we suspend the rules for AB 2162A. Yes, that's right. All right. Second, McHenry. All right, we have a motion by Council Member Schaefer and a second by Council Member McHenry to suspend the rules. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, with that, do we have a motion to approve Agenda Bill 21-62A? I'd like to move. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move that Council approve Agenda Bill 21-62A, accept the City of Duval funding allocation of coronavirus local fiscal recovery funds from the Federal American Rescue Plan Act. Second, Michelle Hogue. Right, we have a motion by Mayor Pertem Remington, a second by Council Member Hogue to approve uh, Agenda Bill 21-62A. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, moving on to Agenda Bill 21-63A, contract for classification and compensation study for discussion and or decision. Um, this is a first touch. Um, I believe um, Ms. Thomas uh, will be taking the lead on this. Wasn't quite right, excuse me. Uh, good evening again, Mayor and Council. I'm uh, pinching also for Dana Mason as she enjoys her son's graduation. Um, as you know, we have gone through the RFP process, so just a little bit of history. Uh, Council approved uh, the issuance of the RFP in April. Um, the RFP was also uh, issued at that same time, about a couple of weeks later. We did receive four responses. The cost ranged from 9,200 to 41,500. And as a team, we can successfully say they were very strong um, proposals. And so we were really excited to see that in comparison to our last go around. These were uh, solid. Um, we have gone through the selection and interview process. We completed that. Uh, 6 7 to 6 10. So it's been a pretty quick process since we um, received the um, proposals in. Our next steps 
are to authorize staff to negotiate a contract with McGrath Consulting. Um, the documents are within your packet. And um, if you have any questions, we can definitely go through them. We do have a cost estimate of $23,500. This will require a budget amendment at the mid biennium. It includes up to three in-person meetings and also includes work on our job descriptions. Uh, staff will bring forward a contract for review and approval on July 6th if you authorize us to move forward. I can take any questions. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Thomas? Okay. Seeing no questions, is, some, is this something that the group would like to uh, make a decision on this evening? All right, I see at least one head nod, uh, so I'd be happy to entertain a motion to suspend the rules. Councilmember Schaefer. I move we suspend the rules for uh, AB 2163A, Contract Classification and Compensation Study. Second, Mike Remington. All right, we have a motion by Council Member Schaefer and a second by Mayor Pro Tem Remington to suspend the rules. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And with that, would someone like to uh, make a formal motion to approve Agenda Bill 21-63A? I move that we approve Agenda Bill 21-63A Contract Classification Compensation Study. Second, Schaefer. Thank you. We have a motion by Council Member Bernicki and a second by Council Member Schaefer to approve Agenda Bill 21-63A. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Um, next item of business, Agenda Bill 21-64A, Roadie Road Overlay Contract. This is a first touch for discussion. Mr. Leniszewski. <coughs> Good evening again, Mayor, Council, staff, and remaining citizens. Steve Leniszewski, Public Works. Uh, this is kind of an informal touch, just uh, reminding everybody of the timelines we've been through as we move forward to the city's first TBD sponsored overlay. Um, granted, it is, is mostly grant funded, but we still are issuing this work out of our transportation benefit district. Uh, we will be opening bids next week, so we will have something for you on the July 6th meeting. As summer is upon us, we are hopeful that what we do uh, and are able to bring forward is as fundable as well as supportable to move forward expeditiously with uh, with hopeful contract approval. That's kind of all I have on that end. Uh, we have, you know, published the bid. We have a few questions that have come in, and we're just trying to drum up business to make sure we get as many uh, bids on the overlay as possible. That's all I have to report. And this is the overlay on Runny Road between Big Rock Road and Baton Road, so the whole road section. Mm -hmm. No action needed. Great. Any questions for Mr. Leniszewski? Seeing none, we'll move on to our last item of unfinished business, Agenda Bill 21-45D, short-term extension of on-call contracts for decision. Uh, I would be happy to entertain a motion at this point. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Mayor, uh, I move uh, that council approve agenda bill 21-45D, short-term extension of on-call contracts. Second, Schaefer. We have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Remington and a second by council member Schaefer to approve Agenda Bill 21-45D. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. And with that, 
Um, I would say great job on moving through our business agenda. Obviously, uh, executive session took longer than expected. Um, so to be able to get through this many items tonight was a, a great feat and I appreciate everyone's quick work. Um, so unless there um, are objections, we are adjourned at 9.49 p.m. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye everyone.